Good afternoon and thank you all for joining us on this edition of KT and Africa Speaks today, the 24th of August 2013. My name is Joy Doreen Bira and this afternoon we are going to put our focus majorly on um, issues to do with music copyright in Africa. And we're going to be asking pertinent questions. The rise of music in, on the African continent has been quite huge and we can all appreciate that Africans today are listening more to African music and that is going to be our major attention today. I've got two very important guests in studio with us. Uh, that is Mike Maganzo, the chairman of the Music Copyright Society of Kenya, and he'll be talking to us more about copyright and what we need to know and what our musicians don't know that they need to know. And also we have Eric Kivuva, who is an advocate. He'll be telling us about intellectual property and how musicians can get against it. Well, uh, before we can even get there, let's start by having a look at what's making news from around the continent. United Nations troops in the Democratic Republic of Congo on Friday launched an offensive shelling positions held by rebels outside the eastern city of Goma. The United Nations was responding to shelling from M23 rebels on Thursday that had killed five residents in Goma, an attack the M23 spokesman said was provoking. The United Nations has a mandate to neutralize and disarm rebel fighters. Its 3,000 soldiers are joining the regular UN peacekeeping force, which has more than 18,000 troops on the ground with a mandate to protect citizens. Peace talks taking place in Uganda this year to resolve their grievances stalled mid this year. And Zimbabwe's Robert Mugabe was sworn in for another five-year term on Thursday. During his inauguration speech, Mugabe slammed critical Western nations and called them vile ones whose moral turpitude the country must mourn. Robert Mugabe took his new oath of office before Chief Justice Godfrey Chidiausiku at a ceremony held in a 60,000-seater football stadium in Harare witnessed by thousands of cheering supporters, diplomats and delegations from the region. <laughs> Prince William, Duke of Cambridge, says he'd love his son Prince George Nasseri Room to be decorated with an African theme as a way to pass his love for Africa to the new entrant into the royal family. Prince William is quoted in a CNN interview saying, I'll have toy elephants and rhinos around the room. We'll cover it in, you know, lots of bushes and things like that. Make him grow up like he's in the bush. He also hopes his son will one day experience the same Africa that he and Prince Harry did as boys on trips with their parents, Prince Charles and the late Princess Diana. Prince William has since paid attention to the protection of endangered species in Africa. It's time for us now to take a look at some of the issues that are captured with using our cell phones or that are posted uh, by organizations. They could be non-government organizations or they could be just people living around the African continent. And this week, the World Bank Africa released the top 10 innovations that are changing Africa. And we are asking the question, is Africa the future of innovation? Well, take a look at some of these innovations that are changing the African continent. The World Bank has released the top 10 innovations changing Africa and we are highlighting them here on Click from 1 to 10. At number 1 is startups and incubations. At number 2, Afro entrepreneurs. Number 3, local technology producers. At number 4, smartphones built for Africa. Number 5, the maker movement. And at number 6, the greater connectivity. Number 7, mobile money. And at number eight is M Health, at number nine is e learning, and at number 10 is social media. Those are the top 10 innovations that are changing Africa today. And well, what more can we ask for? Africa is the continent of opportunity. And those are some of the top 10 innovations that were highlighted by the World Bank. And uh, now it's time for us to get into the platform.
African music has a long history and we can all say that we've come a long way to get to where we are today that has been orally transmitted from one generation to the other and captured in written form in excerpts. But African music has since evolved attracting attention of the world. But there is a challenge, and that challenge is piracy of African talent and their music as well. But, well, let's just highlight some of the issues that are affecting African music, and then we'll be speaking to our guests shortly. African music is loved all over the world, but the record artists do not generate as much revenue compared to their Western counterparts in the music industry. For many artists in Africa, their aim has always been getting their music played across their respective countries, even if they had to do it just for publicity with no returns. Popularity has come at the expense of musicians getting income from their careers. Piracy of African music has been on the rise over the years. With the evolution of the internet, African artists, despite increased fame and awareness of their music across the world, are still not ripping as much from the music. Poor talent management also remains a gap yet to be filled. Well, there we go. African music, like I said before, has come a long way. And today in studio to speak to us about music copyright is Mr. Well, Mike Maganzo, who is the chairman of the Music Copyright Society of Kenya. And we also have Eric Kivuva, who is an advocate here in Kenya. But they're going to be looking at issues pertaining artists here in the country as well as on the African continent and uh, remember the hashtag that we are using is MC Africa and Africa Speaks. Uh, you can share your views on how exactly you think musicians can guard against piracy and actually the bigger question is um, are African artists okay with piracy because most of them tend to think that piracy is what gets them forward is what makes them even more popular so are we looking at piracy at the expense of them benefiting from their career well, um, you do use those hashtags and at KTN Kenya as well as at KTN Africa Speaks are the Twitter handles that we have for you. On Facebook, reach us Africa Speaks. My name is Joy Doreen Bira and uh, thank you so much both of you for joining us on the show. Um, I'll start with Mr. Maganzo. What would you tell us about music in Africa, the evolution of music in Africa and where we are today? Um, I can say we are at a very high level. When we go back to music, and especially back home, music was not regarded as anything of value. It was just an entertainment in the village. And the musicians was just considered as a village musician, an entertainer. The only thing you could earn was to be given a lot of beer. And perhaps, maybe forgive me for saying this, all the women of the village are yours. So we didn't look at music the way we are seeing it now, as an economic power. We have reached that stage. However, we have problems, challenges here and there. Enforcement of the laws of copyright. Mm -hmm. um, governments understanding the laws. 
and especially in our country here we we are trying but i can say we are at the crawling stage we are still crawling well crawling as it is um i'll get to you eric eric uh, i'm sure you've dealt with all these <coughs> cases about entertainment to do with entertainment law uh, when we talk about intellectual property for musicians in yeah. kenya and africa as a whole yes. how exactly would you place it how would you evaluate it uh, generally, and what the law provides is that uh, music is viewed as any other property. And the Copyright Act actually regards uh, music as a property. And this property is viewed in the same way you would view land. Mm -hmm. And the need for musicians to protect uh, this property is the fact that uh, it is from this very pro property that you're going to benefit from your career. If you are not aware that you need to protect uh, this property, if you're not aware that you need to take your creative art seriously. Because the problem we've been having in Kenya is the cavalier manner in which uh, the artistic arts mm -hmm. uh, approach their trade. You, you find that instead of having something on document, you want to have a gentleman's agreement, as, as opposed to, first of all, after doing your, your, your song or your, or your music, uh, there is need for you to approach the Kenya Copyrights Board. They have a registration form that is available online. After you get this uh, registration form, once you've registered, if you're a group, it is important for me to say that um, you need to go for the registration together. But if you're going through an agent, all you need is your, your, your signatures, then uh, you submit all these documents to the Kenya Copyrights Board, after which you get uh, a, certificate, a certificate of uh, copyright within, uh, within a week or two. Once you have that, there is that protection. Mm -hmm. It is the same thing as a title deed to land. And with this, you can go anywhere. With this, you can challenge anyone who picks up your music and plays it as right. their own. Great. Yes. Um, so in this case, you're saying if somebody plays a musician's music without really uh, giving them something in return, yes. then they are, you know, they are allowed to sue this person who's playing their music. So what do we say about the DJs who play their music in uh, different clubs, in different places? What do we say about media houses, uh, yes. radio stations and TV stations that play their music? Yes. I mean, how exactly do they go about this? Can they sue when their music is played without their permission? In Kenya, because of a challenge that would be there when it comes to an artist going to collect their mm -hmm. royalties mm -hmm. in person, mm -hmm. we have collecting bodies. These collecting bodies, we have the MCSK, which is the Music Copyright Society. We also have the Performance Rights Society of Kenya mm -hmm. and uh, CAMP, which is the Kenya Association of Music Producers. All these people represent particular rights, but MCSK represents uh, the, the composers of music. Uh, PRISC, on the other hand, which is the Performance Rights Society of Kenya, mm -hmm. represent the performers of music, while CAMP, the Kenya Association of Music Producers represents uh, producers of music. And I must say that a producer of music is someone who has paid for the song to be produced as opposed to be the person who has put in sound and all that. Mm -hmm. And when we have this body, if you're a member of this body, these bodies collect royalties on behalf of the artists. And that is how they are able to deal with the media houses and, mm -hmm. and these DJs. Right. All of them, including sometimes you find that in the Matatus you need to get an MCSK license for you to play Kenyan music. Well, now we need licenses, and we're going to talk more about the licenses. I'm, I'm sure Mr. M uh, Maganzo Mike is going to tell us more about that. But um, Salif Keita, the Malian Krona, was here in Kenya a few weeks ago uh, on a Kenyan tour, and he did say that, in his opinion, he thinks that the way to go is online uh, promotion of music. But then the challenge of piracy still exists. Uh, let's uh, just listen to what he had to say. comme ils veulent mais euh, bon on aime ce métier on aime mais je crois qu'il faut faire avec l'internet maintenant c'est vrai que les concerts pendant les concerts tu peux vendre des disques hein, toujours hein, parce qu'il y en a qui aiment bien les cd signés et ça existe pendant la tournée tu peux vendre des disques mais aussi il faut vendre les, les morceaux par internet well, there we go. That is Selif Keita of Mali who's telling us about the fact that uh, when it comes to piracy, he cannot control it anymore because no matter what you try to do, it will be downloaded on the internet. And the best way to promote music is through 
the internet as well. Um, I would like to hear from you, as the Music uh, Copyright Society of Kenya, Mr. Maganzo, how exactly do you rate the copyright awareness of Kenyan artists on the Af uh, as well as uh, artists on the African continent? Well, uh, the matter of um, piracy mm -hmm. is not a simple thing, as you have heard what uh, Khalif Kaita is saying. Mm -hmm. And um, especially in Kenya, I'm speaking about our situation here. The laws are not understood. You'll find that we have CMOs, that is Collective Management Organization, like ours. Mm -hmm. And uh, what Kivuva was saying is we have camp for the producers of music. We have also the PRSK, that is supposed to be the rights of the performers. Now, the definitions of all those things have created a lot of tension. You find us as MCSK are going out there. We're talking of economic empowerment. Our work is to collect and distribute royalties to the musicians. We are employed by the musicians. So you find we are all out there. Mm -hmm. The same person paying MCSK is still the one paying camp. They come again, they want money as a producer, as a performer. You know, it has created a lot of tension. And as I speak, we have some who have called me in the morning. They were fighting in Eldred. Our MCSK people versus the camp and the PRSK people. Mm -hmm. Because we have licensed, we collect money from those people. And then camp comes in with PRSK. They also want to share. But tell me, what, what are some of the benefits of musicians, you know, um, attaching themselves to, let's say, the M MCSK, and what are the other benefits that they have in terms of promoting their music across the African continent? One is economic empowerment. Mm -hmm. Actually, in copyright, we have two, two rights which are provided, the economic and the moral rights. So the economic is where we empower you financially by collecting money wherever your music is being consumed in hotels mm -hmm. bars restaurants all over even the matter to psv mm -hmm. they have mm -hmm. to pay and that's what you had uh, kivuva saying you must have a sticker so that is one of the areas the moral rights is where you have a right to say no to your songs being exploited in a perverse or uh, <coughs> obscene uh, circumstances so those are the rights we carry, especially for the composers. Mm -hmm. And also the protection of your name as a, as a member of our society, because we are a monopoly. M music Copyright Society, all members belong to us. We have about 8,000, 8, I think 226 mm -hmm. members now, and others right. have applied. We have mm -hmm. not vetted, because there is a process where we have to vet these members. Okay. The let's numbers are growing. Well, let's just look at some of the tweets that are coming through here. We have Giuliani, who is a musician yes. in Kenya, and he's saying piracy is a friend. It means there is demand and we are not capable of supply. And uh, we're also having George Kisundi, who is saying there's not enough manpower to enforce copyright laws and new musicians don't get airplay, who don't get airplay thrive on piracy. And we also have Rita, who is saying, um, well, she's also asking us to cover copyright for uh, writers of books. But we're having Bonnie Tunya who is saying, so in essence, piracy is a form of music distribution, only that the artist does not make money from his music. And, uh, well, we're having quite a number of them here. Giuliani again is saying, um, piracy just indicates that people are willing to buy and musicians should find ways to supply their music. Uh, music, music is a business and not a music scene. There we go. Those are some of the tweets coming through. Eric, um, what, what, do you, what do you have to say about that? M maybe my two cents on that mm -hmm. is that... Um, I would, I would generally agree with Giuliani that there is demand, yes. and this demand is not being met. Mm -hmm. But again, you, you, you cannot say that uh, piracy is a friend, because if you call it a friend, you are, you, you are as well saying that that person who comes and trespasses on your land, you legitimize that, that, that person who comes mm -hmm. and erects structures on your land is a friend. They're not a friend. And the solution, something that I, I, I think uh, that we need to take it up as Africans, mm -hmm is what I would call distribution companies. Right. You, you find that uh, in more established economies, 
and you will be shocked to learn that Tanzania has, uh, has, uh, has very, very well established distribution companies. Mm -hmm. what, what they do is that once you, you, you've done your music, you sign a contract with a distribution company. This distribution company will be in charge of distributing all your music, of course, at a, at a fee. Any, any of your songs coming out there will have to be distributed by this company. So should there be instances of piracy? Should, should there be a leakage of your music to areas you did not, uh, say, agree to? Then the music distribution company will be held accountable. It is easy when, when, you're, when you're dealing that way because as an artist, you will concentrate on the creative aspect of the music. The other thing that I, that I think people need to understand is when you talk about rights, mm -hmm. uh, the Copyrights Act confers different rights and performers and the producers fall under what we call related rights. You know, the, the, there is a the composition aspect of music. Then there is the related right. Related right is where the, the, the performers and the producers fall under. And it is important for us to understand this aspect so that we will not have a conflict between MCSK mm. and any other body. Because all these bodies are collecting bodies. And what they do, they collect royalties on behalf of these uh, different classes of people. You find that you can be a performer of music. When you perform your song, mm -hmm. it does not necessarily mean you're the writer mm -hmm. or you're the composer. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you're well aware that we have music writers, mu music composers. Yeah. Babyface is one of the big names in the industry. Right. And what he does is he writes your music, but you're the one who performs the music. So as, as a person, you will be paid as a performer. You have a right as a performer. I know that we, uh, they have rights as performers, but yes. then I'd like to know from you, compared to the Western world, you know, the Western world seems to have it all together. Yeah. But when you look at Africa, you know, Africa seems to be learning and crawling. And yeah. I do not know when we are going to walk that we'll get to an extent where African artists are benefiting just as much as the Western artists you know, yes. are benefiting from the yes. music um, industry. What is happening is, as Kevo has just said, mm -hmm. the definition of um, the various uh, categories. When I write, I'm a writer. Basically, I write music and they sing. Mm -hmm. So when you sing that song, for example, Pavarotti. Pavarotti is not a, is not a composer. He sings songs mm -hmm. and puts them in a medium. Right. That is a performer. But you see, I'm a composer. That's a different right. Now here, I am the composer. I am the producer. I am the performer. There is a lot of, uh, you know, misunderstanding in the industry here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this is what now we are trying to, to come together. Because, like in Europe, what they do, they have an alliance, and that alliance has a system of collecting. They are not all over. MCSK is out there, Camp is out there. No, and then we must have membership. This call, this uh, so-called producers in Kenya, what music have they performed? Can they catalog their music? So that they are paid for that. But now when they go to, to the street and collect money, they are collecting money for, for Celine Dion, mm -hmm. Kenny Rogers, right. which we have a right as MCSK. We have reciprocal agreements. Mm -hmm. We are the ones to collect for them. Now when camp comes there and PRSK, what are we doing? I have appealed. I have written to, to the copyright board. Yes. I have written to the AG. And still no, uh, no, no response. No response. But On I'm the asking the people side. to understand. Mm -hmm. To understand and I'm calling upon lawyers. They, they should come in and assist us. Right. Because this is where the problem is. Where, who are your members in camp? Who are your members in person? We have a, a, a good example. Salim Jr. Salim Jr. does not compose. Mm -hmm. He just sings. He's got a good voice yes. and he's a good guitarist yes yes so we use him we give him songs to sing He's, he has no copyright there although <laughs> copyright whatever you sing copyright is um is uh, is automatically ob obtained whether registered or not well copyright is automatically um, yes you know just like you put it but let's let, let's just go through some of the tweets here some people think that maybe musicians prefer piracy because it takes them out there it spreads their music wide and if they're going to benefit from performances maybe concerts and uh you know th when they are called to perform at corporate events if they're going to benefit from that that's all they care Joy. about. Um, Eric, Eric, as we wind up, yes. let me hear from you from the intellectual property side. Yes. Going forward, what do these musicians need to know? Well, I, I, I will agree with, with, with my brother that um, there is need for us to have a real look at the law, mm -hmm. the Copyrights Act. 
and I, I have worked with a number of media houses, mm -hmm. and the challenge they have is that um, they, they are seeing three bodies coming to collect. And you see, mm -hmm. in the mind of many Kenyans and, and mo mo most Africans, when you talk about copyright and when you talk about MCSK, let, let's say in Kenya, you're, you're looking at it as representing all musicians, mm -hmm. and yeah. it is an all-inclusive body. Mm -hmm. That is the understanding that is there. But we have three collecting bodies. There is need for the Kenya Copyright Board to come on board, lead a campaign that will see to it that uh, the bill that is pending before Parliament is enacted, mm -hmm. that will bring about um, a clarity in law. That way we will not have conflict between, between these three bodies. Yeah. The, media, the media houses will be in a position to understand that we will be paying this one body, which represents all the rights. Correct. Uh, number two, I would like to say that it is important for those in the creative arts to engage lawyers. You will find that uh, there is this tradition to avoid lawyers at all costs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is this tradition to enter into gentleman agreements. And these agreements do not benefit anyone, especially where money comes in. Right. Whenever you have something written, whenever you have uh, music that is recognized, uh, that way you are able to protect yourself more. So my, my, my running call to them is that uh, let us take our work seriously. Let us view it the same way you would view your good car, mm -hmm. the same way you would view that piece of land. Right. Yes. Um, Mr. Maganzo, I'd like to hear from you. As we wind up, um, between the composer, that is the writer of the music, the person who pr produces this music, and the performer of the music, who benefits the most? Uh, still the problem is there. Why did the big companies, big companies who are producers and uh, like Philips, mm -hmm. International, Polydor, what happened? They had to withdraw because we came in with our small studios. Even bedrooms are studios. But currently at the moment, as, as the situation is, who of these three people benefits the most? Is it the writer, the performer, or um, the producer? The composer should benefit. Mm -hmm. We have, we have uh, actually we have categories mm -hmm. and percentages mm -hmm. of how they should be paid. Mm -hmm. It is only the methodology used and the modality, which my brother is saying here, we need to come up with the Kikobo and sit down, right. the copyright board and the government. Mm -hmm. We have all these things, we know them, but it seems there is a bureaucracy. And again, our people must be educated. How mm -hmm. are they going to be educated? It is the work of the enforcers of law, copyright board, mm -hmm. to fund, to enlighten the people out there, the public. But when you go to them, we don't have funding, we don't have this. So that's why I say we are still crawling. Yes. But they are positive. They are positive. They are, they are talking to us also. And we are, we, on, although we are lamenting, mm -hmm. but we are, we are seeing a light at the end of it. Yes. Great. And well, uh, I wish I could continue this discussion. But the conversation continues online. MC Africa, that is Music Copyright Africa, uh, is the hashtag that we are using on Twitter where the conversation continues and Africa speaks. Well, my name is Joy Doreen Bira. We've been talking basically about uh, copyright in Africa and are African artists or musicians comfortable with piracy? What do they need to know about copyright for them to move their careers forward and benefit financially from their careers? Speaking to us in studio was Mike Maganzo, who is the chairman of the Music Copyright Society of Kenya and uh, Eric Kivuva who is an advocate here in Kenya as well. Quite a number of challenges for African artists but well I guess there is light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you gentlemen for speaking to us this afternoon mm -hmm. and like I said the conversation continues. My Twitter handle at Joy Doreen Bira. Good afternoon.